an informal visit with the family of Senator John F. Kennedy. This morning, we shall meet Senator Kennedy, his mother, Mrs. Joseph P. Kennedy, his wife, Jacqueline, his sister Eunice, now Mrs. Sergeant Shriver, and his sister Jean, now Mrs. Stephen Smith, with Steve Jr. If you would like to ask Senator Kennedy any questions regarding his work in the Senate, you will have an opportunity to telephone later in the program. Right now, Mrs. Joseph P. Kennedy. Good morning, friends. Six years ago, when my son Jack <clears throat> was a candidate for the Senate, we had this little half hour on television. Many of you, most of you, I think, seem to have enjoyed it. And so we arranged to have it again this year. Of course, there have been a great many changes in the family. The girls, who helped so much before, have been married and have children of their own. And so they have not been able to help Jack as much. But we have a charming addition in the person of Jacqueline, Jack's wife who has been campaigning with him during the last few months and whom I know many of you have met. Won't you tell us, Jacqueline, a little about your experiences? I've enjoyed <coughs> campaigning so much, Mrs. Kennedy. Since September 15th, Jack and I have been traveling through the state trying to meet as many people as we can. Your youngest son, Teddy, who, as you know, is campaign manager, set up the schedule for us last summer. And now he joins us whenever he can get away from law school on weekends. We visited 184 communities, and I think slept in nearly every city in Massachusetts. And we must have shaken hands with nearly everyone in Massachusetts, too. Well, congratulations, Jackie. And congratulations to Jack, that he found a wife who has so enjoyed the campaign. Of course, with us it was a little different, because we were born into a political atmosphere. But with you, it was quite a new experience. I know. Jack has been ungallant enough to say in speeches that you've been campaigning for 65 years. I realize, of course, that he refers to Grandpa Fitzgerald carrying you around in his arms when he was mayor and you were a tiny baby. Well, that is not quite true, because in those days, of course, the women did not have the vote, and so we did not go to the rallies and teas that you have been going. Even so, I'm surprised that Jack hasn't insisted on taking Caroline on this trip. She's uh, back in Boston with us now, but she was very lucky during the early part of our tour to be with you at the Cape. We certainly loved having her. <coughs> and now speaking about the Cape, Jean, how did it go this summer? I was with my <coughs> mother. Bobby was there with his six children. And Eunice was there with him too. And Jack was with Caroline. And of course, I was there with Steve. So it was great fun, all next door to each other. Oh, what did you do, Eunice? <coughs> well, the children <coughs> learned to uh, ride, and they learned to swim. And Bobby took them out to sail. He, he had nine of them down there between the ages of one and seven. And he <laughs> fell in the first day he was teaching them, so they learned to sail very quickly. <laughs> uh, tell me, did you get a chance to go up to uh, Plymouth at all? Well, they're a little young, I think. Yes, I suppose so. But I do hope as they get older, you will take them up there and to province down because I think it's so good for them to get used to going to those things and get interested in things of historical nature while they are young, because it's then, then as they get older, they will foster that interest and uh, be very much inspired by the great deeds of the men who have gone before them. Uh, I think Massachusetts, of course, is a particularly uh, attractive state from that point of view because we are replete with all sorts of mementos and monuments that are associated with the glorious past of which we can all be proud. I am so delighted when I can say that Jack is the United States Senator for Massachusetts because everybody knows what a wonderful heritage we have here. So do take the children around and see that they see all those things and probably someday I hope they will emulate some of the great men who have gone before them, either in this state or in one of the other states. 
now uh, talking about children, I think we have some uh, pictures of the other grandchildren, which I hope the audience will enjoy. Oh, there are Bobby and Maria. Bobby's age four out of Chicago. And that's Maria, whose birthday is tomorrow. She'll be uh, three years old. And we're getting ready to go on a picnic. We live right opposite the big park out there, so we almost like having a big lawn in front of your house. What are you going to eat here in that picture? Uh, Cornflakes, cold milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Me and uh, <laughs> Bobby is here. He's mm -hmm. very boisterous. Just learning to play football. We have uh, two children. My brother Bobby's got four, but everyone tells me mine are brighter and cleverer and happier and stronger, so I think that makes up for it. <laughs> you remember that Bobby may be listening to this <laughs> program <laughs> or may get be sure to get report. <laughs> Here we are in the big Lincoln Park Zoo, feeding the bears. There's an elephant right to the right there, but I hope they won't show them. Here they are. Here they are. Very graceful, Maria. Love horses. Here we are on the picnic in the park, Sunday afternoon. You've been in Chicago, of course, ever since you've been married. Mm -hmm. years, yes. Uh -huh. And I know mm -hmm. you like it so much out here. The sugar candy, is not it? Were they strict after they ate that? Uh, <laughs> no, I think they did very well. They just mm -hmm. ate all the nuts that were supposed to be for the elephants, but they did very well. Mm -hmm. Sergeant is president of the <coughs> Board of Education in Chicago, so he's very much interested in teaching Bobby and Maria. They don't go to uh, kindergarten yet. He teaches them in the evenings after supper. Things that they're supposed to learn in kindergarten. Yep. And this is the Bobby's house in McLean, Virginia. And um, here's Bobby showing us some uh, pictures of autographs that he's been collecting for a number of years of uh, former presidents. And I think this one is uh, John Hancock, the uh, president. And now he's going into the house. And that's uh, his wife, Ethel. And their oldest daughter, Kathleen. She's seven now. And I think she's going to uh, near the rest of the children out in the uh, court in front. She's the second to youngest. <coughs> and yeah. one of the adults. There are six aunt Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Terrible door. How many dogs do they have? Seven. <laughs> six dogs. Seven dogs. Eight birds. <laughs> ten <laughs> rabbits. And uh, Ethel told Michael, the youngest, who's about six months, and Miss Courtney. And next to her is uh, David, David and Bobby and Joe, his name is our brother Joe, killed in the war, and Kathleen. There is uh, Peter Lawson uh, with his children and Pat on the beach at Santa Monica where they live in California. There's Christopher who's four and Sydney who's two. And they're playing with their father because they're going swimming. And here they are with Pat inside the house. And uh, they're building blocks. That's why I was teaching them, too. Christmas is very dark, as you can see, and Sydney's very blind. And uh, Sydney's my godchild. I'm very proud of her. And, uh, 
see so brighter than your children, you miss, at their lessons? I must say. They're showing great their aptitude there. Now she's going to knock it all over, I'm sure. Okay, darling. <laughs> It's the ghost of kindergarten. Yeah. The ghost of the first day. It's so nice the children are growing up in time. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What's going to happen? Can they fight? That brings an Eastern home. And the organ. There we stand here. What kind of an organ is it? Like an old fashioned barrel organ, I suppose. Yes, <coughs> Christopher. He <coughs> looks like his father. Have you been on any of these TV shows now? Do the spin man? I don't think so. Then you should be there. Shouldn't be. Well, I think the uh, pictures of all the family were very good. I'm just sorry that uh, Pat couldn't have come or that Bobby couldn't have come with all of his children. But I want to thank all of you for being here and coming from the far parts of the country to assist us during the last week of this campaign. And good morning, uh, all you ladies who may be there. I'm very happy that you could be with us at home with all of my family this morning. If you would like to call with any questions about my record in the Senate or my stand on any issue, please call me right now at Stadium 20270 or Stadium 20271 or 0272. Jackie, Jean, and Eunice will act as my operators and give your call to me. Before I go to the phones, I want to say just a word about this election on November 4th. One of the most difficult things an office holder has to do, in my opinion, is to ask people to vote for him. It isn't easy to make a lot of statements about my record or a lot of promises about the future, but let me say this. In the last month, Jackie and I have been in every corner of Massachusetts. And for the last six years, I have been directly or indirectly in touch with practically every citizen in the state. I think I know the people of Massachusetts pretty well, and I think they know me. I think you know what I stand for, what I am trying to do for our state, and how I believe a public office such as United States Senator should be filled. So without, I hope, being too presumptuous or taking too much for granted, my biggest concern now is that you go to the poll on November 4th. In times such as these, when the right to vote, the right of free elections is under assault all over the world, I really don't see how anyone can stay at home on election day. Never think that your vote is not needed or is unimportant. Never be able to say on November 5th, the day after election, that you forgot to vote or that it was too much trouble. Whatever trouble it may be, whatever party you may belong to, I hope you will go to the polls on November 4th and cast your ballot. If you believe in what I've been trying to do, if you believe in the, our program to strengthen Massachusetts and the nation, I hope you will find it possible to cast a vote, for which I will be very grateful. I see that the girls have taken some calls, so I will get right to them. First question is, are we stronger than Russia? I think that uh, strength is made up of many ingredients. We're economically stronger, we're politically stronger, I think that our greatest phase of weakness is perhaps in, in long-range ballistic missiles, where they have had a lead over us. I think it's going to take a concentrated effort during the next two or three years for us to catch up. I believe that effort should be made. I've supported a stronger defense in the past and will in the future. This question is, my 
Husband's unemployment compensation check is too small, and he hopes for an increase. Well, it is a fact that the average unemployment check for one of our unemployed workers in this country is $31 a week. And the Bureau of Labor Statistics has shown that it costs a single person to live in one of our cities on a survival basis, $52 a week. So I offered in the Senate and uh, Congressman McCormick in the House a uh, bill which would have provided in May for a federal minimum standard for unemployment compensation. It would have meant that an unemployed worker honestly seeking a job would have received compensation equal to 50% of his wage, up to two-thirds of the average wage in the state for a period of 39 weeks. I hope we can get it through in the next Congress. I think your wife will make a better senator than you. What do you think? I agree with her. In any case, I have the benefit of her advice, so maybe I'll improve. Is my boy going to be able to get into college? Well, it is a serious problem. In the next 13 years, by 1970, in other words, we're going to have, uh, in place of the 3 million boys and girls getting into college this year, we're going to have 6 million. In the state of Massachusetts, instead of about 123,000, we're going to have about 270,000. That means we're going to have to double our facilities. Now, in our private universities, uh, I would hope and I say this as an overseer of Harvard University, that we would be able to get more assistance from private endowments and business groups and others. But in addition, the federal government can play a role. In the last housing bill, which was defeated by three votes in the House, it provided, in addition to loans for the construction of college dormitories, it also provided for loans for the construction of classrooms. And, I, and then I think the state has a major role to play to develop the state university. I think it's going to require a concentrated attack because we need the best educated citizenry that we have, that we can find, and I don't think any boy or girl who is talented uh, should be uh, denied the right to go to college. Did the McClellan Committee investigations accomplish anything? Well, I was on the McClellan Committee. My brother was a member as well as being on the Permanent Labor Committee, and I think the committee did accomplish something. It did bring to light the problem of uh, the infiltration of racketeers into the labor management picture and the use of uh, unions for the uh, advantage of these racketeers and the infiltration into business of uh, corrupt uh, people who had nothing in common with the labor movement or with responsible business. We brought it out, the Kennedy Ives Labor Reform Bill, which was written by Senator Ives of New York, a Republican, and by me as a Democrat, which was to carry out the recommendations legislatively of the McClellan Committee, passed the Senate by a vote of 88 to 1, it was defeated in the House 198 to 190. I can assure you that we're going to start again next January because I think responsible legislation is supported by honest labor and management alike. If I write you a letter in Washington, will you answer it? Well, I can assure you that uh, we will. I won't be able to do it for the next few days, but after the election, I certainly would be look forward to hearing from you. And I, and I really mean that because the more information we get from our people back home, the more we know how they feel and what the problems are, the better we're able to represent you in Washington. So I would hope that not only will you get an answer, but I would like to hear from you. Uh, can we stop the rise in the cost of living? Well, uh, the rise has been going up steadily. It stopped in September and there's been a stretch out since then, but it did go up three or four percent in the seven months preceding. It's difficult in a free society where uh, everyone can go their own direction to have the complete control over the cost of living, but there are several things that can be done. In the first place, uh, we can, the Federal Reserve Board can administer the credit supply of this government in a way which will restrict inflationary pressures. We can make sure that we do not spend too much in government, that we don't have deficit financing, which is a stimulation to inflation and to higher prices. We can make sure that those prices which are controlled, such as natural gas and the basic commodities and uh, public utilities oh, here in yeah. a state like Massachusetts, that they're administered oh, fairly and well, and in a whole variety of ways do our best to attack uh, this problem, which I think is a terribly difficult one, particularly for those people living on fixed income and on retirement to find that their retirement check every month is becoming worth less and less. I think it's a number one problem, and I hope that we can do take more effective action in the coming months and years. If you are a Democrat, why is my boyfriend a Republican supporting you? Well, I don't know unless you've talked him into it. But uh, in any case, I hope that uh, every citizen of Massachusetts 
uh, regardless of their party, if they can, will support me, and if they cannot, of course, uh, that they will support uh, uh, my opponent. In any case, I do hope, as I said before, that they will come to the polls and vote, and I'm glad to hear that uh, we're getting, that they, in this case, a Republican is supporting us, because I think I've attempted to represent all the people of this state in Washington in a responsible way. The final question uh, of uh, this series is, uh, what are you doing for the fishing industry? Well, the fishing industry has been one of the industries hard hit by excessive imports. And in 1954, the Senate, the Congress passed the so-called Salt and Salt Kennedy Act, which was sponsored by both senators from Massachusetts. This provides that the duty collected on the importation of foreign fish, instead of going as it used to go to the Department of Agriculture, for the support of perishable vegetables, now goes to our, uh, the uh, fishing industry for research. We send a ship out, the Albatross III, which goes out and does research on how to uh, pack fish and how to freeze it better and find new fishing ground. And in other words, help by research the fishing industry to develop its resources. In addition, uh, Senator Saltonstall and I have introduced a bill this year, which came out of the Senate committee, and which I hope will pass next year, which will be of more direct assistance to the fishing industry, provide a revolving fund for the purchase of new vessels, and provide other protections for the fishing industry, which are greatly needed. Without a strong fishing industry, we don't have a strong economy here in the state of Massachusetts. Do you think that our light bill is too high? Well, the uh, regulation of uh, lights uh, and the price of those commodities comes under the state commission. And I think that they're best equipped to uh, deal with that uh, uh, problem because uh, it doesn't come under the federal government and I really haven't got uh, information on it to, to give you a really intelligent answer. How many babies did you kiss in this campaign? Well, I didn't kiss uh, enough, I guess, but uh, I didn't manage to, there didn't seem to be much desire on their part, but uh, in any case, we saw a lot of mothers whose hands we shook in. Uh, I'm a high school student. How can I get into politics? Well, uh, as it's now uh, 10, uh, 20 a.m., I'm hopeful that you're going to go to school today, as it is a weekday. But I do uh, hope that uh, all boys and girls, even if they're not old enough to vote, will participate in these campaigns. There's a campaign on this year that's going to be one in 1960, and I hope that they will go to the party headquarters that they believe in or go to the headquarters of various candidates who they like and uh, volunteer their help. All the jobs that need to be done in the campaign can be done regardless of what age you are. We have a lady in our headquarters who's writing uh, uh, cards for us every evening at 150 Tremont Street who's, uh, who's 90. And then we have a lot of girls who come in from high school and boys who are helping us distribute literature so that whatever age you may be, you can meet your responsibilities as a citizen. And I hope that you will in this campaign and in other campaigns to follow. What is your stand on civil rights? Well, I support uh, legislation to make sure that every one of our citizens and their children are guaranteed equal rights. And I've supported all civil rights legislation in the 12 years that I've been in Congress. We want to make sure that every boy and girl, whatever color, whatever race or creed, are given an equal opportunity to develop their own resources and talents. And I think that that uh, must be done in a country, which is a free country. Uh, we don't say that everyone will be able to have, have equal talents, but at least they ought to be able to develop what talents they have equally. And that's the essence of this system of government. And I believe in it strongly and will continue to work for it in the United States Senate. You think we have enough uh, Social Security? Well, quite obviously, our Social Security payments have not kept up with the cost of living about which we were talking earlier. In the last Congress, we attempted to increase them 10%. We were not successful when they did go up 7%. But the cost of living during that same period had gone up nearly 8%. Now, the cost of living will be up again, unfortunately, uh, probably by January or February, and I'm hopeful that we can meet that problem again. I think that the fund is sufficiently strong, certainly, to provide for benefits up to the 10%, which I mentioned. How is your health? Well, it's fine. I had a bad year back in 54 as a result of an injury I sustained in the Navy, but I've been fine ever since, and I appreciate the interest. Uh, the Navy got around very good. Can anything be done about those airline crashes in New England? Well, one of the problems have been, of course, is that we have bad weather on the coast, and that we have uh, uh, 
fog and a good deal worse conditions than they have in other sections of the country. We're only, uh, the CAA puts in safety facilities of a particular kind only when you're 20,000 flights a year. Some of our airports such as New Bedford and uh, Nantucket have less than that. So we've been working with the CAA in an attempt to get an amendment to their provisions in order to provide that when you have a percentage of flights in a concentrated period of time, it's particularly bad weather, you will get these facilities. But we really need them and we're going to get them. You think we're headed for war. Well, the issue of war and peace is really in the hands of the enemy, the Red Chinese and the Russians. But if we're strong and determined and we indicate that we're going to meet our commitment, uh, then I think that the peace uh, can be held. That's my hope, and I think that the chief threat is going to be indirect subversion instead of outright military action, though, as I have said, it has to be in the hands of the Red Chinese and the Soviet Union. How many more children do you want to have? Well, I'd like to have all that we could have, and having seen my brother have six children in seven years, I'm hopeful that we will, I don't know if we'll meet his mark, but we'd like to try. I understand that you're a shoe-in to win, so why should I bother to vote for you? Well, I'm not a shoe-in. As of today, I have no votes, and I won't have any votes until election morning when the polls open. So that I, I'd like to win, and I'd like to win as well as I could. I think it helps those of us who speak for Massachusetts, if the people in Washington know that we have the support of the people in our state. And uh, so that I'm hopeful that all of you, as I said before, will go and vote. We need all the votes we can get. We won't have anybody's vote, as I said, when elections start. And uh, if the people don't vote in the 12 hours that the polls are open, then we can't win. But if you all go and vote, see if we can get our friends to vote, then I think we do have a good chance to win, and I think it's going to make it easier for us to speak with more strength and vigor in the Senate if people realize that the people of Massachusetts have given me their support. So that I uh, guess this is about all the questions that we have time for. I'm very grateful to you for having come uh, this morning and having the coffee hours. We're going to be sending a lot of younger people around to your homes during this week with distributing a, a magazine or really a tabloid, which has some of the things that we've done. I hope you'll have a chance to say hello to them. And I want to thank my mother and all my sisters for coming once again to help me in a campaign. And now uh, I'd like to have you come over and meet uh, what I hope is our greatest rooter, but is our greatest campaign worker in the future, our daughter Caroline. Caroline, why don't you come over here and see what's going on? Uh, this is the first time that she's been on uh, television, but uh, uh, I hope that by the next campaign she'll be seven years old. We can put her out to, to work more actively. We want to thank you again for coming. She's, uh, uh, she's the youngest member of our family, and but I'm grateful to her and to my wife, Jackie, and to all my sisters, I've said, and to my mother especially. As she, as it was said, she started campaigning for my grandfather, Fitzgerald, and when he was mayor in 1908. And uh, she's been working for either her father, my, or her father, my grandfather, or my father, or for me for the last uh, half century. So we're very grateful and we're fortunate to have her help and we're fortunate to have Caroline, who's now 11 months and will be a year old, November 28th. The election day is just one week away. Next Tuesday, exercise your right to vote and re-elect Senator John F. Kennedy, United States Senator.